Hey everybody, welcome back to my intro to programming video series. This is your host, Michael Hicks, and today we're going to continue programming using the Windows console application, the little black text box we were working with last time. But this time we're going to expand our programming knowledge a little bit and learn about if statements and then implement if statements into our program. So if you don't know what if statements are, basically it's a way of writing code where you say, okay, if this is true, execute this line of code. Otherwise, if this other thing is true, execute this other line of code. It's a way of branching or choosing what things we want to do in our program. And to give you a video game metaphor, imagine you're playing a story-based game like Mass Effect, and imagine you're talking to one of the AI characters and you have to pick some dialogue you want to speak, Underneath in the code, when you pick dialog, the programmers are using if statements to do things. So let's say if the player chooses this dialog option, the AI responds in this way. If the player says this other thing, the AI might respond in a different way. This is a very common thing you'll do in programming. You'll see if statements all over the place. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to make a program we're going to use our imaginations a little bit today let me just say that we're going to do a little bit of role-playing so hopefully that excites you guys you you RP role-playing fans out there we're going to imagine that we've come up to a security door and the security door is asking for our name if we type in a name that it likes you know if we're on the guest list or whatever we will be accepted and let into the door otherwise we will be rejected by the door so Let's go ahead and go to File, New, Project. Make sure Console App is selected in this menu. And I'm going to name this project Intro to Programming 3. Again, you guys can call it whatever you like. And then press OK. And Visual Studio has generated an empty project just like last time. Uh, this should basically be really familiar to you guys. We're going to actually just do what we did last time. We're going to start this off by writing a line of text to the console. So let's say console.writeLine and we're going to pretend that the security door is speaking to us. So let's say security, security door colon uh, beep beep because that's a computer door thing to say, right? Beep, beep, boop, bop, beep, 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 and then we'll say uh, halt. Who goes there? Which, <laughs> basically, uh, this computer sounds like it's from the medieval times instead of the future, but whatever. And then, just like last time, we're going to read line. So if you remember last time, Whatever the user typed into the console, we basically just ignored it. Um, but this time we need to store whatever the user has typed in and whatever is returned from this read line function. And we need to save it in a variable so we can use it throughout the rest of our program's uh, runtime. Because we will use the name that the player types in a few times uh, during our runtime. So let's make a new variable called name name will be a string because we're storing text we can define it just like that and then we'll say name equals console dot read line because read line is returning whatever is typed in to the console window by the user so we want to store that so we can access it anytime throughout our programs lifespan and actually you, you know what let me show you a handy little trick we can actually define the variable and assign it all in the same line. So let's do that instead. String name equals console dot read line. Okay. So now we've stored the name that the user has typed in. But now we need to actually check and see if it's something good that we like. And basically whatever is good is whatever we define it to be. Um, so I'm going to say if name equals quotation Michael all lowercase 
then then we'll like display a positive message. But first, let me explain what this is. So first off, I want to say let's take a look at this line right here where I'm using an equal sign name equals console dot read line. Notice that one equal sign is used here to assign data to this variable. But down here inside this if statement, we use two equal signs to compare. So two equal signs compares two different things. One equal sign assigns data to a variable. So notice that just like functions, we use these parentheses right here. And whatever is inside the parentheses is what we're checking to see if it's true. We can have all different types of things in here. Right now we're checking to see if name is equal to Michael. Go ahead and press enter and then do an open curly bracket. And Visual Studio should automatically make a close curly bracket for you and then you just put another space in there. Whatever is inside these curly brackets is what is executed if the if statement is true. So curly brackets on if statements are used in a similar way to curly brackets on functions. Remember, these curly brackets show us where the beginning and the end of a function is. These curly brackets show us where the beginning and end of an if statement is. So whatever is inside this, these curly brackets, that is what we will execute. So let's go ahead and write console.writeLine. And this is basically executed if the name is Michael, so we want to display a positive message. Let's say uh, security door, because the security door is talking to us. Oh, it's you. Put a space there, and then we'll go outside of the quotation marks and say plus name plus. And then we're going to do another quotation mark, explanation mark. Go on in. Sorry for the inconvenience. And then don't forget your semicolon at the end. So you're probably wondering what this plus name plus business is about here in this line. We haven't done anything like that before. Basically, it's just letting the security door speak my name. So if name is equal to Michael, security door will say, oh, it's you, Michael. Go on in. Sorry for the inconvenience. Um, wh whatever is stored in name will be displayed on the screen. Just like last time, we're just adding it to some pre-written text in the quotation marks. So now we need to take care of the case if the name is not equal to Michael. So if the name, if this if statement, if nothing is called inside this, we'll do this. Else, curly brackets. If name is not equal to Michael, we will display a negative message. We will say security door will say error and then we'll go outside of the quotations again plus name plus is not allowed get lost. So let's recap this one more time. We're going to have the user type in a name. If the name is equal to Michael, or whatever you put here, you can put your own name or whatever. If the name is equal to Michael, the security door says, oh, it's you, Michael, go on in. Else, if the name is not equal to Michael, the security door says, error, name, which is whatever you typed in, is not allowed, get lost. So. Let's press the start button. Also, a hotkey for starting your program is F5. So we, let's start the program by pressing F5 or hitting the play button up here, whatever is easier for you. I like F5 personally, so I'll probably just use that from now on. OK, so now our program is building. And it should pop up in just a second. All right, there we go. Security door, beep, beep, halt. Who goes there? I'm going to say Michael, all lowercase, enter. Oh, it exited. We forgot something, didn't we? Yeah, we did. All right. Do you know what we forgot? It's an easy one. We need to say console.readLine after that if bracket. 
Okay, let's run this one more time. Okay, security door. Beep, beep, halt. Who goes there? I'm going to type Michael. Enter. Oh, it's you, Michael. Go on in. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's all good, door. Thanks for letting me in. <laughs> so, let's try. We, we know it works that way, but it's a good idea to check the other way, make sure you know it's working if we type in a bad name. So let's say, uh, Joe. Is Joe allowed to go in? Nope. Error. Joe is not allowed. Get lost. And that's basically the gist of if statements. However, there's one thing, and maybe depending on how you guys type your name, you might have run into an issue here. And let's in C sharp, all text is case sensitive. And let's let me show you what that means. Remember, in the code, I typed Michael all lowercase. But what would happen if I type Michael with a capital M instead? What do you think will happen? Let's see. Oh, no, Michael is not allowed with a capital M. Get lost. Hmm. That's because when I said the language is case sensitive, that means we have to spell this exactly like how we type it here. And if this was a real game, this would be super inconvenient. Ideally, we would want anything that says Michael to be accepted. So the question becomes, how do we actually do that? And luckily for us, if you go over here to name and then press the dot, IntelliSense brings up a bunch of functions that we can call on the string variable type. And one of them happens to be a very handy function called to lower. It's a function, so be sure we do it open and close parentheses. And what to lower does is it takes every single character that's in our string and makes it lowercase. So that's convenient. It doesn't matter how we spell Michael now. It could have a capital L, a capital M. The to lower function will make everything lowercase so we can easily check it here. There's also a to upper function. So if you wanted to spell everything in capital letters, you could do that too, but I think lower looks a little nicer. So let's go ahead and press F5, or press this play button, and let's see if it fixed the issue. All right, who goes there? I'm going to spell Michael like this, capital M, all jacked up. Oh, it's you, Mike ha -o. Go on in. So notice that it accepted, it accepted Michael with the capital H and A and M, but it still displayed Michael on screen with the capitals. And that's because this function right here, it's returning the lowercase result, but it's not actually being stored into our name variable. So if we wanted to do that, if we wanted the name to always have the lowercase letters, we would say name equals name dot two lower. Oops. And that way the lowercase result would always be stored in there and it would be written on the console with lowercase letters. So uh, that's a handy little function. And uh, I guess that's it basically. Yeah, I mean that's the gist of if statements. I'll see you guys on the next video.